G'day folks. Well, it's time to have a look at this mystery power unit. This came out of a uh, industrial wood shop and uh, I believe it was used to operate a uh, press of some sort, probably a laminating press or something like that, maybe for making laminated beams. Uh, it's full of wood dust and as you can see it's definitely wood shop machinery and uh, yeah I've taken the motor cowling and cover and that sort of stuff off already and had the top cover off partially uh, but that's about all I've done with it. I haven't tried to power it up I'm not going to but I might try and power the motor up since it's come loose without dumping oil everywhere it does appear to have a sealed bell housing and a very big pump a lot bigger than I thought considering the size of the outlets but looking at all that blue max that they've put around the place and the uh, re-drilled bolt holes and other bits of reworking and a lot of fluid bypassing. I'm thinking they've uh, done a fair bit of modification to this. I'd be willing to bet this is off something else and they've just modified it to work. I think this thing's going to be bypassing a lot of fluid given the uh, size of that output. That's a uh, three quarter or one inch output which would be perfect for my uh, hydraulic motor. So yeah I'm thinking I might just ditch the PTO pump on the Yanma and couple this baby up to it. I can't get the lid off yet because it looks like there's a uh, filter element tied in via that big low pressure hose but yeah if I unbolt the top the whole housing should separate. And they've really gone to town with the Blue Max. Not to say it hasn't worked. Like it worked really well. But I'm thinking, yeah, as I've said in previous videos, update videos, split the motor stator off and just make an a, a, um, output coupling using part of the old motor's rotor and just couple that straight to the Yanma. Now the pump rotates and the direction arrow is pointing that way so it's going clockwise from the motor end so I'll just look at the way the Yanma rotates. Which way would that go? That would go... No, it'd probably go the right direction. So I could probably couple it to the front of the engine. I don't know, I can't quite remember right now what direction that goes. They should all go... Should be counterclockwise from the front of the engine. I don't know. Brain's playing up at the moment. But either way... It's fairly heavy. I don't know why it's so heavy, but the motor's broken loose fairly easily. Just undoing these nuts, it's just cracked away and it's not dumping fluid on the floor. So the bell housing here is clearly held in place by other bolts or castle, cat, cat nuts there. And that's sealed. So we've got a bell housing with a drive coupling, I guess, and a rubber, rubber drive um, member or whatever you want to call it. Mm, yeah, it's not bad. I'll probably use this for now and then maybe go for the big guns. These are fittings too. I don't know why they have what these are used for. Whether they just put them on there as lifting lugs or what, but those are actually uh, hydraulic fittings. So I could use them. I could probably screw them into the motor and use them. That or their capped off return fittings just for a, uh, a bypass high, high volume return to tank although I'd rather them be below the fluid level so as not to aerate it because dumping fluid in above above fluid level causes air bubbles to be churned up and drawn into the fluid and you get air bubbles going through the pump so anything in hydraulics and oil where you don't want air bubbles in the system have your returns below fluid level which in this case would be almost up to here but that's still a little bit high you'd still get a jet of fluid entering the surface of the uh, the volume in here and creating air bubbles. But the filter on the pump appears to be down the bottom there, so it's not a huge issue. Yeah, there's a filter on there. That's the suction side on the far side there. And there's a low pressure return hose, which appears to be what goes up to here, to that, I'm guessing, a strainer. And then it goes down. Yeah, so it's got a return strainer and a pump intake strainer. And that red hose coming off the bottom of the strainer housing must go just straight to tank, I guess. So 
So yeah, I'll just unbolt this top casting and try that. So it's got the filler, it's got the fil input filter and everything, filler filter. It's ideal. Instead of trying to make my own tank out of an existing one which has all kinds of weird fittings and no main filling port on it because they filled it through the machine base itself, the, the steel structure of the pipe bender was drilled and fully seam welded as a part of a tank as well so the tank I was going to use is a fairly elaborate TIG welding job and other, other things like that so I could probably blank it all off and use it as a diesel tank instead. It's probably the same volume as this, just more rectangular. It's a lot narrower, thinner. So, yeah, I've got plenty of tanks. I just need uh, a means to drive. Anyway, let's pull this motor off and stop rambling and get something done. The motor needs to come off. We'll see what we're dealing with as far as drive couplings, because that'll determine the fate of this unit, whether I pull the pump or um, keep it together. Because I was expecting this thing to be a lot smaller internally. I was just expecting a like a piddly little PTO size pump. Not that monster. That was quite unexpected but very good. Considering it was going to end up getting scrapped anyway. Can't let good stuff like this go to scrap. Hmm. This thing's uh, pretty easy to work with. We do have a nice bell housing in there and a drive disc. Mm, rubber guibo or whatever you want to call it. I can't remember what people call those. Flex coupling. <laughs> yeah. If it didn't end up with such a immensely long setup, like literally something about eight feet long, I'd probably be inclined just to put a drive attachment on the end of this motor and couple the whole lot up to the Yanmar and run it as a uh, three-phase generator and power unit. Because you can uh, you can excite a three-phase motor that's being externally driven and use it as a generator. There is something to think about though. Hmm. <laughs> It'd end up as a very large power unit, but it would work. It's an interesting little uh, idea. I believe this motor's still alright. I haven't tested it yet, but we can always do that. Hmm. I keep making things more complicated for myself. <laughs> Maybe it's probably not a, not a good idea to pick up a old uh, Lincoln pipe liner um, diesel power generator, or not generator, welder. I don't even know what they're doing with that one though, but this thing here was going to get scrapped, so yay. See shiny copper down there, no burning, but I'll ohm, ohm it up and try it on the RPC and see what it does. It might work, it might not. If the motor's fried, well, it's even better because then I've got no excuse not to bloody lop the end of the shaft off and use this housing and bearings just to support. Very cool. But either way, the inside of that is just a uh, another side of the coupling, male side of the coupling. And these are threaded into the bell housing too, that's clamped it in there. We've got cap screws also holding it in, so it's completely sealed. There's no sign of oil getting through, just a bit of water. It's been out in the weather at some point, or probably even installed out in the weather permanently. And uh, yeah, it's just had water get in. Not a big deal, clean it all up, away we go. Okay, well, let's start the UPS first, oh sorry, not UPS, the um... RPC first. Uh, I really need an automatic start capacitor thing, so let's see what the uh, inrush is. Ooh, that's healthy. Start on. There we go. Need to get rid of that. The diagram says you can use a push button, but I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> It's a safe push button, but I don't like the way my breaker sits at about 30 amps for a couple of seconds before I can get to the button. I'll replace it with one of these. So, RPC's up. Let's see what this baby does. Shouldn't start too violent. Leave it. Leave him up out of the way.
Ooh. It's been violent. He wants to go. I did I did ohm it up. It's 2.4 ohms in any possible combination, so it's quite happy. One thing I haven't bought yet is a mega meter to actually mega things. And when I say mega, I mean a high voltage resistance to test to ground. So if something's starting to break down but not showing on a multimeter, the high voltage mega meter test will actually cause a, an arc over from the bad insulation to ground or whatever to another, another winding and uh, it'll come up as a failed reading or a bad reading. I'm just waiting for those chains to get wrapped up around the fan. <laughs> that would be nasty. Somebody's actually tried to sabotage this. They bashed the fan cowl in. You could see numerous strike points where someone's deliberately smashed it in. And all these blades are broken off where someone's jammed a screwdriver or something down past the fins. There's little scratch marks and things and chipped fins where they've... Uh, They've sabotaged it to scrape marks. It's not just somebody scraping dirt off it. You can see where they've scraped muck off it, but someone's also deliberately jammed something in the fan and smashed the fan cowling in. Right. Same as the Alan Bradley PLC equipment I got. The uh, big vacuum fluorescent data liner unit had the front smashed in and the um, DTAM, the data table access module, thousand bucks worth of little control pad is completely screwed because someone stabbed it with a, uh, a knife or something. They stabbed the membrane pad and everything and just destroyed it. So this is from the same batch of equipment. It was part of a press system. Uh, they sold the press but the rest of it wasn't working well enough to be sold so it got scrapped and I just parted it all out for uh, electrics and contactors and PLCs and things like that. And, this is pretty much the last of it. Came out of a major truss manufacturer, roof trusses and house frame material, that sort of thing. Anyway, it works. Idler motor's quite happy. Yeah, I wonder if I should turn this into a generator. I don't know. I mean, I'm quite happy that that's one single piece, so. I should probably just stick with the plan and go for a small hydraulic power unit, but a uh, small three-phase generator would be handy. It's just a matter of syncing up the uh, frequency, that's all. That'll use it as an engine-driven RPC. That's always an option, rather than being a dedicated generator, have it as a plug-in RPC. Oh well. Okay, well, part of the, as part of the top panel, we have this filter cartridge, as I suspected. It's fairly old. Definitely in need of replacement. And the rest of it... It was two pieces at one point, and... Well, sorry, one piece, and I was able to lift that up with just a... Uh, the red hose that's attached to it just goes down to the bottom of the tank and is cut off. So it's a... Uh, this is a return fluid filtered, uh, there's also a little magnet on there and the spring loaded cap just holds the filter down, it's really simple and this is all screwed together completely so I'm not sure how I'm going to get the rest of the lid off, not that there's any real need I might just get a flashlight and uh, we'll have a close look at it without ripping the lid off, I want to see how well this thing runs as it is without tearing it apart or doing anything too, too serious the motor runs alright but I'm more interested in hydraulic power at the moment, so we'll look at a uh, standalone three-phase generator using one of my other diesel engines, even just a petrol engine. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with using a petrol engine; they just cost more to run, as far as fuel's concerned, and fuel goes off a lot quicker. Whereas this sort of thing can hang around for a while. So I don't think I'll overcomplicate the build by trying to make a generator. It'd be a more stable and easier option if I build a standalone, at least that way the governor can be set 100% and I'm not worried about varying loads and things. So, yeah. Let's just focus on a hydraulic power unit and then uh, 
a three-phase generator.